have developed a brain implant that can read people's minds and turn their thoughts into speech. The team at the University of California, San Francisco, says their findings published in the journal Nature could help people when disease robs them of their ability to talk. Experts said the findings were compelling and offered hope of restoring speech. The mind reading technology works in two stages. First, an electrode is implanted in the brain to pick up the electrical signals that maneuver the lips, tongue, voice box, and jaw. Then, powerful computing is used to simulate how the movements in the mouth and throat would would form different sounds. This results in synthesized speech coming out of a virtual vocal tract. Instead of scouring the brain for the pattern of electrical signals that code each word, the focus is on the shape of the mouth and the sounds it would produce. Hmm. Professor Edward Chang, one of the researchers, said, quote, for the first time, this study demonstrated that we can generate entire spoken sentences based on an individual's brain activity, end quote. Hmm. The technology is not perfect yet, but shows incredible promise. Here, let's listen to an actual recording of the system reading its users' brain waves and saying, quote, the proof you are seeking is not available in books. The proof that you are seeking is not available in books. As you can hear, it's not quite perfect, but keep in mind that was generated by reading someone's brain waves. In experiments with five people who read hundreds of sentences in their heads, listeners were able to discern what was being spoken up to 70% of the time. Beyond helping restore speech, there is also the more distant prospect of helping people who have never spoken to learn to speak with such a device. An example might be a child with cerebral palsy. Professor Sophie Scott from University College London said, quote, This is very interesting work from a great lab, but it must be noted that it is at the very early stages and is not close to clinical applications yet. End quote. Well, you can say that, but that is incredible. You- right. So, so, like, why didn't they think of this before? Because I, it's like my approach to weight loss this year is like, right. I'm not trying to lose weight. No, I'm trying to learn how how my body reacts to certain things. So similarly, they're learning the, the movement of the mouth, right? Like the same way, well, like part, I yeah. think about uh, like uh, false limbs, like robotic yes. limbs, they use nerves to actually control the hand and everything. So this is like that, but moving a false mouth in a way exactly. to make the sounds. The interesting thing about this though, is the fact that it's using the brain signals that would go to the mouth and voice box implies that you have to have already been able to speak. Right. That's why they're saying eventually it will mm-hmm. be. Right. So I think it would be hard to train somebody who's never spoken and maybe that's it. Yeah, exactly. Yeah. So like I'm sitting there thinking, you know, you might have like a nonverbal autistic child. Yes. You wouldn't be able to use this. Not necessarily. The way it's written, that's not, not necessarily yes. true, though, yeah. b- because we don't. And and there are cases certainly where it's not going to be applicable. And another case would be somebody who stopped speaking because sure. yep. of, say, brain brain damage that has affected yep. their ability to generate those signals. Mm-hmm. So, but what if the signal cutoff is somewhere between the brain and the mouth and the vocal right. cords? What if, like, I you're talking about. Uh, the, a child who can't speak. Well, mm. sometimes you'll see them moving their mouth, but there's no sound coming out. Mm. Mm-hmm. And, and and so there are cases where maybe maybe the brain is sending the signal, but maybe it's not being interpreted correctly, yeah. or maybe there's a mm. a nerve that's not functioning correct. Who knows, right? But this is a case where it's, it's not going to work for. It's not a cure all for exactly. everyone, right? But with seventy percent accuracy. This, well, here's the thing. This is the starting point. The yeah. starting point is 70% accurate. I can't even believe they're here. I know. It'll be interesting to see how this plays into things like um, end of life care and legal rights as oh. far as ability to take care of themselves. I mean, how many people have you seen their health deteriorates and they end up in a position where they can no longer communicate? But maybe, if it's muscular. Right, but maybe in their head, they still have the ability to process those thoughts. And it's like like ALS. Exactly. Mm -hmm. Yes. So that could be very interesting. Or somebody who has suffered a stroke. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Totally cool. Great.